Hello, hello. Thank you guys for tuning in to another interview from Entropy at its best. Thank you guys for all your continued support with King Simon Entertainment as we bring you wonderful, great content and as we continue to just be committed to bringing you education, awareness, positive images, positive topics, and positive information as the platform continues to grow. We have another interview today with Philanthropy at its best, another great organization, um, another great, great, wonderful, well-known organization we're really excited about today. Before we do that, I want to continue to thank you guys and my partners Heart to Heart for You, Heal to Heal, was doing a wonderful giveaway, Men, Women, and Children's Shoes. Uh, please subscribe so I can pull your name out of the subscription list. Please subscribe. Social media, King Simon Entertainment Company on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, James Clayton Interviews. Please subscribe and support uh, what we're doing here as we continue to grow. And I uh, just want to really thank you guys because the, the platform is really growing. And so we're going to be pulling our um, giveaways from the subscription list. So make sure you subscribe. If you have anybody who wants to shoot, send them to you um, as you get picked. Um, then you could be able to also refer somebody. But make sure you subscribe with names in the, in the um, subscription list. And so uh, we're looking for our guests to come on. Uh, he'll be here in a minute. So until then, we want to thank our partners and our sponsors. Heart to Heart for You org, Hill to Hill, USC Black Alumni Association, also our partner and sponsor, and the Morning Greenwood Foundation. Thank them so much for all their support that they do. And if you are interested in support, interested in supporting King Sound Entertainment Media Group, please send us an email at um, King Sound Entertainment TV, and we will definitely reach back out to you and show you what you need to do to become one of our sponsors and our partners. Um, I told you guys to subscribe. Make sure you do that because that really helps us out. Definitely subscribe on all social media. And uh, wonderful, great, more great interviews coming up. Wonderful, great things coming up. And we're excited today to have our guests. And so as soon as I see them in, I let them join. I believe, um, I'm thinking that's the, that's the, my guest. So, um, let me join the guest in. Let me see if this is my guest. Stay tuned. It's going to get my guest, guys. so much for your support. I hope that was my guest. <sighs> All right. <laughs> okay, I see my guest now. <laughs> you know, this internet, it takes a little time, so in a minute. We're going to start an interview in one second. I think I see my guest. And thank you guys so much, man. So you guys have been so supportive. We're getting it together. Definitely getting the production together. Everything is coming together. I'm really excited. It's going to get better and better. Um, support for Philanthropy at its best, Hollywood Now, and also uh, KS News. And we want to thank you guys so much for your continued support and what we're trying to do to get the information out. Let me see if I can bring my guests in. Be a little patient with us. I see them in, but I have to uh, be able to add them. So, so. yeah. So, um, Fletcher Cat is best. Another great interview today. Um, soon we get our guests in. We'll start. 
I thank you guys for your patience. You know, the, the internet and trying to get them to come on. And I'm just going to continue to keep trying. But wonderful, great interview today. I see you, I see you doctor. I just got to add you. Um, I pushed add and I didn't see your name in there. But yeah, let's admit it, it takes a little time. Um, Holly, uh, Fletcher Pad is best. Of course, we are a, a online talk show that deals with humanitarianism, and we honor and, and celebrate the wonderful, great works that the nonprofit foundations are doing, uh, nonprofit organizations as well as philanthropy. Uh, we just excited about the wonderful humanitarianism of these wonderful, great organizations, and um, and we just want to give them a platform to come and share uh, about the wonderful work. Uh, that um, they're doing, Doctor. Um, one of one of my friends to the show said you have to request me. If you could request me, Doctor, I'll be able to add you. Um, uh, request me, Doctor, so I can add you. Push request. You know, because a lot of the doctors they don't have a personal social media, so but give him uh, give him a minute. Uh, once he once he requests me, then I'll be able to add him. Doctor, make sure you request me so I can add you on. And so, thank you guys so much for all your support. Um, and just continue to, you know, continue to support and subscribe. It really helps us out a lot to subscribe. And just stay tuned to the wonderful things we have. We have another great interviews coming up. Um, wonderful, wonderful growth, wonderful support. And we're just going to continue to definitely um, make the platform better and better. I'm really excited about everything that we have accomplished so far and um we're just excited about it so doctor if you request me i can okay let me see got the same number let me see if i can do it now doctor doctor did you request me okay let me do okay he's gonna do it now he said let me do that okay yeah, so before I used to panic at these things, now I'm a pro, so I don't panic no more. Just ask you for your patience, and we want to definitely get started with the interview in a minute. Um, dealing with the internet and production, this is what happens. And so I um, will definitely encourage you guys to subscribe for us. I cannot stress it enough. Definitely partner with us as we continue to grow, and we all grow together. So definitely reach out to us, King Solomon Entertainment TV. If you want to um, become a sponsor as well as a partner with us, um, it's another interview with Philanthropy at its best. This is what we do here. We honor and celebrate uh, nonprofit organizations, uh, humanitarianism, foundations, as well as uh, philanthropy um, involvement and um, community give back. And so I am waiting for to see if I can add. The, oh, okay. I'd like to add them. So let me see. Cross your fingers, everybody. Hopefully it worked that time. Doctor coming on. <laughs> Hopefully it come on at this time. Thank you so much. It's coming up. Hopefully it's waiting to join. So doctor gonna come on. And so you 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 are joining us for another interview with Philanthropy at his best, where we honor and we pay homage to um, <laughs> right, doctor. We pay homage to humanitarianism, nonprofit organizations, foundations, as well as philanthropy uh, in endeavorment as far as changing lives one people, one person, one good. organization at a time. And we yeah. here with another great organization. I think mm -hmm. I'd be a location with the internet, but we are here. Well, none other than American Heart Association and American Stroke Association. And I'm so excited to have you. We're here with Dr. David Pryor. Um, if I could just read a little bit of your bio, doctor. Just a little bit, because the bio is so long. And I'm so excited to have Dr. Pryor here today. But just, I'm going to, a little bit, see if I can do a little justice a little bit. Uh, undergrad at Stanford, that was very impressive. Medical school, San Diego, UC San Diego. Uh, master in health healthcare at UC Berkeley. Uh, he serves on the board of the American Heart Association, uh, executive uh, VP of and medical director of ADA, and uh, also a, a member of the Commercial Business Association, Aetna. 
A E T H A. I never knew how to pronounce that. Etna, as well as a uh, well point at them, and a certified um, medical board member as well, and the founder of BlackWomen'sHealth.com, among other so many other wonderful other accolades and accomplishments. And I'm so happy today to have on Philanthropy at its Best, the American Heart Association, American Stroke Association, Dr. David Pryor. Thank you so much, Dr. For Thank doing you. Our platform and our outlook. Thank you so much. And so, if you could somewhat introduce yourself a little bit, I know I did a little justice, but you formally introduce who you are and what you do. Yeah, okay. You, can you hear me okay? I can. You can. Okay. Hey, so, first of all, I just apologize for the little technical techni technicalities there. You know, I was trying to get on Instagram from my laptop. And I had to have my, I got two, two daughters and I had to have them come in and help me a little bit to yeah. put it on the phone. So that's why it was a little mix up there, but excited to be here today. And, and as you said, uh, Dr. David Pryor, so I'm an internal medicine doctor. I'm a physician board certified and I am, work as a uh, executive as one of the large health insurance companies. And also though I'm on the board of directors for the American Heart Association, so that's, in a sense, how I'm coming to you today to talk to some about the American Heart Association, about a lot of things that I'm sure you're going to ask me about in a few minutes, but excited to be here, always excited to be able to share some medical information that hopefully can help people kind of live this healthier, happier life. So really excited yeah. to be here, James. Yes. So can we start with, um, I guess, a concise denotation of what heart disease is and how it affects us as well as the stroke exactly so you know heart disease is this big category when you're talking about everything from high blood pressure it's considered part of heart disease uh, and i'll talk about the people that have strokes that's all we call it cardiovascular right so cardio yeah. refers to the heart Vascular refers to blood vessels, like arteries and veins, right? So cardiovascular is, is, is the heart and all the other uh, vessels that supply it. And so, um, you know, heart disease, heart attack, stroke, all these things that we hear about, they have a big effect, especially on African-American community, right? As many of you know, you know, we have higher rates of high blood pressure. We have higher rates of diabetes. And when you have high, those higher rates, then we also then have strokes. Probably many people can know somebody in your family who's had a stroke at some time, unfortunately, right? So all those diseases really affect us. And James, you've seen a lot with this COVID, right? Yeah. Even talking about COVID, who is it affecting the most? Unfortunately, it's the, the, the Latinos or Latinx community and African-American community really are getting affected the most. And they say, why? Well, one of the reasons is because, you know, it's people that have higher rates of high blood pressure, obesity, diabetes, you know, when this disease COVID hits you, it, it really uh, has a stronger effect. So a lot of things we can get into, but that's what, you know, cardiovascular or heart disease is. And the stroke? Yeah. So stroke, when we talk about stroke, that is, is in a sense a, a lack of blood supply often to the brain, right? So somebody has a, a either clogged arteries coming up here in their neck, these carotid arteries, right? And when those arteries are diseased or there's a plaque built up, you lose the blood supply to the brain. And that, in a sense, is what causes a, a stroke, right? And with a stroke, you sometimes can then have some of the the classic symptoms, and there's something we call FAST, F-A-S-T, that some person can first notice a facial droop, one side of the face starts to droop, right? So sometimes you'll tell people to smile, and they can't smile normally. One side will be drooping, so that's part of it. Sometimes their arm is affected. The arm can go numb, or they may lose feeling, or they just can't move it at all, right? The other thing to think about is speech. Somebody can't talk, they can't get their words out, or they're slurring their speech, right? So all those things are some of the symptoms of stroke. And the biggest thing there, the last thing on that T is to really call immediately, right? You need to call 911. If you can get people to the hospital as soon as possible, there's treatments that we can do that hopefully can almost like reverse those, the, the stroke that's happening, right? And give them certain, certain medications. Um, but James, as you know, oftentimes, Again, 
you know, if you see somebody who then is in a wheelchair or maybe they're paralyzed on one side of the body, sometimes that's the effects of a stroke. Wow. So, so what, why is it important that um, we, we really pay close attention and listen to our bodies as, as we go out through our, our every day? Because these are the kind of things that can just sneak up on you and it could be quiet sometimes. So yeah. what are some of the things we need to listen to with our bodies? Yeah, well, that's exactly right. You know, high blood pressure or hypertension, you know, we often used to call it the silent killer because many times you could have high blood pressure and don't even know it. You, know, you feel pretty good and think of a lot of people maybe in the 30s, 40s, those ages, you could be having high blood pressure and you may not know it. Now, some people certainly can notice it and they start having headaches, things like that. That's one sign sometimes of high blood pressure. But sometimes you don't have it. And then unfortunately what happens though, that high blood pressure is starting to damage your heart, it's damaging your kidneys. And then, then oftentimes people will just uh, uh, show up with a stroke or those symptoms. Let me tell you a quick story real quick, James, that uh, a, a, a gentleman who was a colleague of mine, You know, he had never gone to a doctor for many years. He said, I'm healthy. I play basketball on the weekends. I've never gone to a doctor. And then one time he said he was driving home and um, he, he, his car, he flipped his car over. And he had lost consciousness while he was driving. And anyways, Bob Monty took him to the hospital and they found out that his kidneys were in kidney failure. And when you peel it all back, what had happened with this gentleman was that for many years, he had never went to a doctor. He had high blood pressure. So that high blood pressure was doing damage probably for the last 10 years. It had impacted his kidneys and he didn't even know it. And then probably what happened, he was driving the high blood pressure was so much he blacked out driving, lost control of the car and crashed it, right? That's how it all went. And then went to the hospital and found out his blood pressure was like 200 over 100. So that's what you, you hit it on the nail that sometimes it can be silent. You don't even know it. And that's why it's so important to, uh, to, to get checked out. Yeah, and so um, with, with, let's talk about a little bit about the preventative method. Yeah, what can we do to prevent? I know the diet has a lot to do with it, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, you know, diet is is the first start of it, right? Um, diet. We talked about diet, like in low in sodium, you know, low in fat, right, is always the first part, and then certainly the exercise. So traditionally, you know, James, one of the things that with the American Heart Association talking a lot about is this, this idea of, of food access, right, and food security. Traditionally, in a lot of neighborhoods, especially a lot of neighborhoods we have grown up in, or in, in the urban areas, there haven't been a lot of great food options, right? You have a lot more fast food. Fast food is what? It tastes good, but it often has, you know, salt on the fries, salt on the burgers, all those type of things, and that's not good for your diet, right? And so um, diet is really that first, that first stage, decreasing the, you know, potato chips, um, junk food, fast food, fried chicken, all the things that sometimes take good, really trying to moderate that, and then trying to get that exercise. But as you know, that can be, even exercise can be a challenge in some neighborhoods if you don't feel safe driving or walking. So that can be good. Hold on one second, I'm just going to get uh, my daughter here. Can you get my charger for the phone? I'm sorry, I'm just being real. <laughs> I don't want to go out <laughs> without having my charger. So. Yeah. yeah. But does that make sense to you, James? So it is, like you said, it's diet, it's exercise as the first stage. And then, though, if you do have high blood pressure, it's, hey, go to the doctor. You may have to get on some medication, some pills for a little bit. But, you know, I always say, what's, what's worse, you know, um, take a pill once a day or have a proof where you can't even walk. So if you look at it from that standpoint, Point, um, I think that the, for, for me, the answer is easy, that you really have to, you know, take care of yourself and, and try to prevent these diseases. Now, as well as, like, hypertension, too, also leads to stroke. If that got, like, people stress, right? You kind of stressed out and stuff. Yeah, you talked about stress. Stress certainly plays a big role in there. I'm just adjusting my phone here. Sorry yeah, yeah go ahead. All right. Yeah, the stress. Yeah, that certainly plays a big role in, in all this as well. Um, and give you an example. When you're talking about even about 
African American women, right? And talking about um, premature births, right? And you know, premature births and and poor birth outcomes. They've done these studies where you're looking at white women versus African American women, right? Even if you have African American woman who is college educated, has money, has insurance, all those things, they're still finding these differences that our African American women are having, you know, premature births or poor infant mortality, all those types of things. And they figured out why is this happening? And they've concluded that there's this level of stress that just comes with, you know, being black in America that plays a role in all of this. So to answer your question, yeah, I think that's really true that, um, you know, people that are living under stress, you know, again, you know, issues with job security and all kinds of things that can play a role in, in, in raising blood pressure and just it, having poor health in general. So that's very important. Yeah. So let's go back for, to the diet for a minute. What, yeah. what can we really do? Because, you know, we, we, we in like lab, mass production of food and a lot of processed food. How can you really avoid that when a lot of the food is bad that you buy everywhere? Yeah. Because of, yeah, what's in the GMOs and all this stuff. Yeah. I mean, I think the thing, the basic answer is the more you can do to make sure you're eating fresh fruits and vegetables and putting that into your diet every day, that's certainly the best start, right? You know, many people will say, even when you go to the grocery store, right? You heard that they say stay on the outside of the grocery store, right? Because you know, going in the store, often the fr fruit and vegetables is on the outside. When you get inside those inner aisles, right, there's more of the processed food, the cakes, cookies, stuff. So they say try to stay on the outside <laughs> aisles. I've never right? thought of that. That's so true. That's so yeah. true. <laughs> so that, that's one part, right? And it, it takes a lot yeah. of just discipline, right, and willpower. Because I said it, it's easy. I mean, some of the things that, that aren't good for us, right? I, they do taste good, right? I think yeah. sometimes fries taste good. I mean, they're, that's real, right? So you're kind of battling that, but trying to say, gosh, I really want to invest in myself, invest in my health and my body, right? More than anything else. And so I would say just it's small steps. You know, some people go all the way and they say, hey, I'm going to be vegan, I'm going to be vegetarian. I, I think that's great if you can do that. But for most people, it's hard to make that big of a shift, right? So I would say, you know, making the small steps. Here's one thing I would tell people, even if you, let's say you really want to go to burgers. I don't know if it's Burger King, McDonald's, wherever you want to go, right? I say, well, if you really want to do that, you know, and you want some kind of, you know, maybe you don't have to get the whole meal, right? Because the meal is the burger, the fries, and the Coke or whatever drink it is, right? So maybe it's kind of like, even when I would go back in the day, I would like, maybe I'd order the sandwich, but I would just say, okay, and water. I mean, so that's a little bit of a compromise, right? So you're not taking it away completely. But if you do everything, the burger, the shake, the fries, and and, and, and all that, it's just too much. Or well, a burger and a salad with water. And a sa yeah, something like that, you know, and trying to, you know, make those, make, make those changes. Yeah. So working with the American Heart Association, American Struggle Association, what yeah. are some of the challenges? What is some of the misconceptions about getting the right information out there. What are some of the challenges in that? Yeah. Well, one of the biggest things that we're talking about now is this attitude of uh, don't die of doubt. So one of the things that we found um, with COVID, oops, is that a lot of people um, that were having maybe heart, chest pain, heart attacks, or maybe strokes, they just weren't coming into the hospital, right? They weren't coming into the hospital because they think that, gosh, I don't want to catch COVID, right? And we're saying, no, you know, you can't, you can die at home because you're scared of going to the hospital. And they did this study with um, uh, a poll by Harris, and it said that like over 50% of Latinos and about 45% of African Americans, they really says, hey, I think I may rather stay at home as opposed to going into the hospital because I don't want to catch COVID. And what American Heart Association is saying, hey, no, that's not the right answer, right? That you can actually go to the hospital if you're having those symptoms. It's better to go to the hospital. The hospital will take care of you. And now there's a lot of, you know, protocols in place to say that, hey, it can be a safe place to go. It's a better place to go into the hospital, get treated for your heart attack or possible stroke than staying at home. Because the one thing we know, if you stay at home too long, 
especially in a stroke, right? Every second counts. And if, when your brain is not getting oxygen, right? That's what happens, right? You get a blood clot, your brain is not getting that oxygen. You can have permanent damage. But if you can get into the hospital very quickly and we can give you some medications to open that clot up, and restore that blood flow to your brain, then we can save your brain function. So that's the whole idea of this, you know, uh, a don't die of doubt program. Don't die of doubt by the American Heart Association. Yeah, uh, but also uh, attached to that, Dr. Fryer, with the 911 calls, people also think of the cost. People also think uh, what's misinformed about uh, the curbside assistance. When you go, and you had an issue, they were telling you to call, make an appointment. They wouldn't let nobody in. And so that also discouraged a lot of people as well as far as how do you get the correct information. So it's so important that you put this out there because people, real life experience was different in the midst of the pandemic. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. And so, yeah, when they went out there, they, they were saying they were getting something totally different, you know. And so it, it was unfortunate, but I, I'm so excited about what you guys are doing. And that's why we have this platform um, because a lot of humanitarianism is on the front line right now. And so it's really imperative that we get the right information out. And so that's why I'm so glad to have you guys here today. And so, yeah, but that was one of the, that's one of the discouragements in that, the 911 code, when it's COVID time, that people experience, people experience is different. Big difference, yeah. And so so we're trying to do a lot of that, really improving that communication because again, that's that's one of the biggest things that came out of this is that you know our communities were really, you know, being impact impacted in a really negative way. So hopefully, you know, by doing shows like this, by your platform here, which I think is so great, getting information out there, that people will really know that, you know, um, let's be clear as much as we can, right? And that if, if again, don't stay home go out there and seek the care. And, you know, that's a, a better way to go. But I totally understand what you're saying that sometimes we haven't been perfect in the messaging. And so uh, I, I think that uh, you know, hopefully shows like this and others will be able to, uh, you know, illuminate that, that aspect. Yes. Well, thank, and, you, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in to another interview with Next Care at his best. And we're so excited to have the American Heart Association, American Folk Association with Dr. David Pryor today. And um, please make sure you reach out to American Heart. What's, what's the website for you guys? Yeah, it's AHA, American Heart Association dot org, AHA dot org. And we have, you know, chapters all across the country. You know, obviously, this is the, the Los Angeles affiliate where we do a lot of, of great work out here. But it's been around, as you know, James, since 1924. There were six uh, cardiologists, six heart doctors that started American Heart Association. And again, the biggest things here in Los Angeles is we're really focusing, you know, on improving food access, food insecurity access for that for people. And we're trying to just get the word out. And last thing I'll say, one of the biggest pivots is that now we're starting to see that we really have to do more with our community, especially our communities of color, right? There's all these issues with housing, with food access, with you know, uh, violence and, and safe communities. And so American Heart Association is really doing much more in that area. Years ago, we just used to be focused on the heart only, right? Heart and, and blood pressure. But now we're saying we have to branch out and do more. And so that's yes. why we're so happy to be on a show like yours and others to show that we're very close to the community. Yes, and I was so excited that you guys got to come on and um, just excited about the work you guys are doing because my people... Like I said, it's misinformed, ill-informed. They don't really know. And it's, it's, it's something that you experience. Even once you experience, a lot of people don't know how to articulate it because it's a silent killer. It's not well understood. So yes. a lot of people don't have the right words to really express how, what happens. And it's, like you said, it's so uh, ambiguous, so vague, because a lot of things is happening with the blood, with the, with, with the oxygen. And yes. a lot of people say, well, how do I even express what's happened? It happens, then you lose memory, you lose mobility. It's you, you know, so where do it? You know, so where do you start? Where do it ends? Because it's such a, 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 it's such a, a very, very, um, um, I, you know, sad um, experience, and a lot of people don't know how to articulate it to prevent it moving forward. It is something that you experience, and it's yeah. very traumatic, you know. And, and, and then so, one of the other big things that I think I wanted to mention too is with um, tobacco. 
Ah. You know, one of the biggest risk factors for heart disease beyond, you know, you know, your diet, high cholesterol, high blood pressure is smoking, right? And so that's one of the big things we've been very uh, uh, concerned about is really trying to, you know, decrease people from smoking. And we've seen the last couple of years, a lot of these um, um, flavored tobacco, right, targeted towards the kids, right? And so we've been very active, really advocating for that. And also the menthol, menthol flavored cigarettes, right? I didn't realize like 85% of African American people that smoke, they smoke these menthol flavors. Mm. And if you look back, the tobacco industry really targeted African Americans with this menthol, right? Yeah. And that flavor and kind of hooked a lot of people on that. And so yeah. that's another big thing too. Smoking tobacco, especially cigarettes, that really accelerates heart disease so we're really trying to get that word out too and making sure that all these billboards and advertisements that's been in our communities trying to tell these big drug com these big tobacco companies you know stop targeting us start you know for profits they're, they're really killing us over profits you know yes thank you guys so much for joining another episode another interview with Black Status Best where we honor and pay homage to nonprofit organizations foundations as well as humanitarianism that are changing the lives one person at a time. We was here today with the great organization, American Heart Association, American Stroke Association with Dr. David Pryor. We're so glad to have you. Hopefully you'll continue to be a friend to the show to bring a, a doctor, a medical aspect to a lot of these issues that we just experienced but haven't articulated, haven't put our, our hand on it properly to really be effective in a preventative method because the preventative method, especially with the disparities of healthcare and so many other disparities in our community, the pre preventative methods really are frontline effective way of how we're going to really sustain. So I thank you so much for putting the great information out there in the awareness. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, reach out to, to Dr. David Pride Association. Hopefully you come on again. We have you again and definitely be a friend to the show. Thank you so much. And thank have you. a great rest of your day. Anything you want to finish with before we leave? No, thank you very much. Keep doing great work. I appreciate it, James. Thank, thank you so you. much. Till next right. time. Thank you, David. Bye -bye. Thank you, Doctor. All right. Oh, my God. Help me today.